Okay. Uh, I want to thank God for uh, this blessed time and uh, this opportunity. Uh, this is uh, the second time uh, God has allowed me to uh, to speak uh, with all of you. It's it's uh, nice to see uh, so many of you young uh, people uh, who are seeking for a godly life in this uh, day and age, especially when uh, uh, more and more people are uh, becoming more and more godless. Uh, so uh, the 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 subject, uh, as you know, is uh, preparing for uh, the Lord's return. And uh, the song uh, that was chosen by uh, brother was uh, very appropriate. Uh, and uh, this is more or less what uh, I would uh, uh, I would be sharing today. Uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, in the Bible, if you if you have read from Genesis to Revelation, which I hope at least uh, uh, once, uh, if you're a born again believer. Uh, you must uh, you must read the Bible uh, from Genesis to Revelation because that's the only book that God has given us, and uh, uh, we 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 find that uh, there's a lot of lot of uh, ink space given to uh, given to this subject, uh, especially in the New Testament. Uh, you know, uh, in the book of uh, Thessalonians, you know, uh, we are we are studying here in the Bible Church. Uh, uh, the main topic is the, the Lord's return. And again, in the book of Revelation, and uh, the Apostle Peter speaks about it. Jesus himself spoke about it in, in the Gospels. So it's a very, very important thing. And uh, uh, what we've uh, seen uh, through history is that uh, for a long time, this, uh, this subject was not preached at all. And uh, God in his mercy has again uh, uh, again, started uh, uh, awakening all the uh, all the churches to to preach on this because uh, uh, the signs uh, are in place and uh, many many uh, godly uh, godly people uh, believe that uh, we are in in the last uh, days and uh, I'm going to share a few scriptures uh, which will uh, make it abundantly clear that. Uh, it is indeed uh, the last days, and uh, we read uh, in Second Timothy. Second Timothy. I'm reading from chapter three, uh, and verses one to five. Second Timothy, chapter three, verses one to five. Uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, verse which talks about uh, the spiritual condition uh, that will be uh, in place uh, in the last days. Uh, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And this verse really has spoken to my heart many times, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such people. So here it talks about uh, the condition uh, of uh, the last days, which is people will be lovers of self. And, you know, selfishness has always been there in mankind. We read that right from uh, the book of Genesis. But now it has gone to the next level. You know, uh, this selfie culture, uh, this selfie culture has uh, taken, uh, has gone to such an extent where people are just lovers of themselves. They're taking so many pictures of themselves and posting on Facebook and uh, you know, Instagram, and it's all about, uh, you know, showing yourself off to the world. And uh, it is uh, it, it is incredible that the devil has managed to, uh, to fool so many people uh, into, uh, into just uh, being absorbed by, by being uh, focused only on themselves. And uh, 
we must be careful, especially you young people. Uh, you need to, uh, you know, be careful that uh, I'm not saying that we should not take selfies. I have taken selfies. It's it's not evil, but uh, you know, uh, being uh, completely what do you say uh, uh, addicted to it, and uh, you know, uh, addicted to show social media and all those things that. Uh, will definitely affect your Christian life. Uh, and uh, what this culture is basically promoting is uh, ourselves. Instead of us being focused on God, uh, the focus is on ourselves, And that is something that uh, we see that ha happening rampantly uh, in today's times. Uh, and if you look at, uh, there are many prophecies uh, uh, which uh, point to the return and the other most important prophecy, you know, which uh, which is about the nation of Israel. Uh, uh, I, I just want to share a couple of verses. There are tons of verses which talk about uh, the nation of Israel. If you, uh, if you look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 24, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 24, uh, you see, uh, uh, God is telling through the uh, prophet Ezekiel that I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands and I will bring you into your own land. Now, no other uh, nation or no other country, uh, no other uh, people who were scattered for such a long time uh, came back and formed a nation except uh, the nation of Israel. And if anybody doesn't believe, uh, you know, in the Bible, uh, you, you just need to uh, look at the nation of Israel and look at the prophecies which were made concerning the nation of Israel uh, hundreds of years ago and uh, thousands of years ago, rather. You know, Ezekiel was, uh, uh, was living in the years uh, 500 before Christ, you know, 500 or uh, 600 years before Christ. And... Accurately, he he predicted uh, the the uh, the nation of Israel. We read again in Isaiah forty three verse six, Isaiah forty three and verse six. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So after Jesus was crucified, uh, the nation of Israel was scattered. Or never before they were scattered all over the world like that. Uh, uh, they were exiled, we know, in Babylon uh, for 70 years. Then they came back. But uh, after Jesus uh, was crucified, uh, God completely uh, allowed, uh, you know, uh, judgment to come on Israel. And uh, the, the Roman emperor uh, sent uh, uh, General Titus and he destroyed, completely annihilated uh, Israel and Jerusalem. And all the Jews were scattered throughout the world. And after 2,000 years, in 1948, uh, almost 2,000 years, the nation of Israel was born. And that was fulfilling the prophecy that we read just now. From the north, from the east, from the west, all over the world, uh, the Jews came back and formed the nation in, uh, in 1948. So... Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, we, uh, that we are in exciting times because here Jesus, again, you know, this is coming straight from the mouth of Jesus in Matthew 24, uh, verses 32 to 34. Matthew 24, verses 32 to 34. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. As soon as its branch has become tender and sprouts its leaves, you know that summer is near. Uh, verse 33, so you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near right at the door. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take, take place. And just to emphasize himself, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So, uh, you know, from the time I was born again, you know, more than 15, 16 years back, I've been hearing this, uh, you know, the Lord's return, and uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, you can also, uh, uh, you, you know, if you hear uh, this for a long time and Jesus doesn't come, you can uh, uh, think that, oh, it's not going to happen. But 
uh, but the Bible warns us and tells us that we must always be ready for the Lord's return. And uh, when you're young, you know, especially, uh, we think that uh, uh, we are going to live forever. You know, uh, the thought of uh, meeting the Lord uh, doesn't occur. And my prayer indeed is for all of you that you live a hundred years. But, you know, life is not guaranteed. We all know that. Uh, recently, one of my uh, friends, he was not a believer. You know, he worked hard. He made a lot of money and uh, he struggled to uh, build up his business. And uh, uh, he, he was in his early 50s and uh, suddenly he had a heart attack and he passed away. Uh, and uh, that really uh, made, me, uh, made me think, you know, uh, a lot on these lines because I tried to reach out to him. Uh, of course, he rejected uh, uh, Christ. But uh, what what came to my heart is, you know, all the things that he worked for, uh, in one moment, it's gone. It's 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 finished. It's over. And uh, one one thought that uh, always comes to my heart is, you know, in this world, we all run after money, and uh, money is the currency. And I'm not saying that we should not work for money, but the moment uh, you pass from this uh, life uh, uh, and you face uh, eternity, all the value system that this world has becomes completely obsolete in just a moment. And uh, Jesus, that's why it tells us that keep your eyes on uh, things above because this life is just temporary and uh, it's, it's going to pass away like a vapor. So we must keep our focus uh, on things that are about, things that are eternal. Uh, as we sang, you know, when it's all been said and done, uh, what we have done for love's reward, only that will stand the test of time. So uh, it's, it's, it's very important. Uh, in Hebrews 9, you know, in Hebrews 9 verse 27, uh, it, it, it is written very clearly, uh, it is appointed for people to die once and after that comes the judgment. You know, uh, this is one statistic. One out of one person dies. Nobody has been able to beat. Uh, except, of course, two people. Uh, anyone knows who those two people are who did not die but went to heaven? Anyone? No. Enoch. Yes. Yeah, Enoch and yes, Cyril. Elijah. 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 Yes. Enoch and Elijah. So only two people uh, uh, in the history of the world uh, did not die, but every other person dies, and Jesus tells that you know after we die we have to face judgment. And uh, again, I, I do not want to scare you or anything. You know, uh, one of the things that I have uh, I have noticed is whenever we talk about the Lord's coming and, uh, you know, judgment and all that, there is a fear or something. We should not have these kind of thoughts. Uh, yes, there must be a reverential fear and that fear should rule our hearts throughout, not just when we hear this message. Uh, the way I look at it is, you know, uh, all of you have passed out from school, colleges, right? Your teachers always tell you uh, uh, before exams, uh, study well, these uh, questions are going to come. Uh, and no one, none of you would, would have been uh, intimidated or scared. Oh, why is teacher telling me to study this? And why is she talking about exams? No, it's normal. I mean, this is how life works, isn't it? So this is also normal. This is how life works. And uh, for many people, I mean, who don't believe, uh, for them, uh, I mean, they don't care. But for us who believe and who say that, okay, Jesus is the Christ and he is uh, going to uh, be our judge and uh, he is going to reward us. Uh, we have put our trust in him. For us, uh, we must uh, live according to our faith and uh, this is going to happen with all of us. Uh, great and small, young or big, everyone is going to stand before the judgment of uh, seat of Christ. So uh, what shall we do? Uh, 
in revelation in revelation we uh, we see this wonderful uh, wonderful uh, scripture uh, revelation chapter 17 uh, verses 7 and 8 uh, revelation chapter 17 verses 7 and 8 uh, let's rejoice and be glad uh, and give glory to him because the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has prepared herself it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen uh, bright and clean for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints now this is very uh, interesting uh, the way uh, the bible describes this you know in the book of revelation uh, the marriage of the lamb okay now this is the final uh, uh, celebration that is going to happen and we know uh, the bride is the church okay you and i we are going to be part of the bride and uh, here it says it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen bright and clean and it explains what the fine linen is the cloth that you and i are going to wear on that final day uh, is uh, the righteous acts of the saint that means what we have done in our life after we were born again uh, those uh, those righteous acts will determine the uh, beauty of our garment now we all know how brides prepare themselves when before they want to get married isn't it i mean the preparation starts a year before especially in india uh, which uh, uh, which uh, hall we are going to book and what catering and you know what will be the bridal dress and uh, you know who's going to stitch and uh, there, there's so much of preparation goes on right so uh, the bible compares that with how we should prepare ourselves that means uh, our works whatever we do or the righteous acts they will determine the uh, the beauty of the garment that we are going to wear in heaven when we and that's going to be forever and ever okay so what we do here and now in this life will determine how we are going to spend eternity so uh, all of us know uh, eternity uh, infinity uh, to 70 or 80 or 100 uh, is nothing i mean when you compare 80 to 100, uh, 80 or even 100 years to uh, infinity it's almost like zero that's why the bible says that our life is like a vapor so we have one shot at life you know and uh, w- what Uh, what we must do is do our best as we sang in the song did i do my best uh, god is going to help us uh, all these things that we hear it, it should not intimidate us it should not scare us but rather uh, we should we should be excited and say hey this is the only chance that i'm going to uh, have to love the lord uh, to repay for all that he has done and we are not alone god is promise to give us his power the holy spirit to help us to live a godly life and you know uh, uh, uh jesus uh, has uh, spoken about the end times in matthew 24 and also in luke 21 now in luke 21 there's an interesting uh, uh interesting uh, addition uh, which is, you don't find in matthew chapter 24 and i just want to read that luke chapter 21 verses 34 to 36 uh this is jesus talking to his disciples about the end times and he says uh, in verse 34 but be on your guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life and that this day will not come on you suddenly like a trap verse 35 for it will come upon all those who live on the face of all the earth but stay alert at all times now this is key stay alert at all times praying that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man so jesus is telling that be on your guard why because your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness uh now uh, he is not talking about physical drunkenness okay he is talking about being drunk with the world that means 
we are so much enamored or uh, attracted to the things that this world has to offer uh, with all its uh, uh, beauty and glamour that we get drunk with it and Christianity or coming to church and that takes a backseat. That means people will still come to church, but their whole focus will be uh, on how to become rich. And when you are young, especially, you know, that, that's a great temptation that what am I going to do? What career to choose? Which uh, a job to take? Is this going to help me to get married and settle? And those are all legitimate worries. Uh, I mean, we, we all need to do that. But is that my only aim and goal in life? Because the Bible says very clearly that if we seek the kingdom and his righteousness, God is going to add all these things. So uh, there is a rat race in this world and uh, we must, uh, you know, do our best in school, in college, uh, in our workplaces. No doubt about it. But our entire focus should not be captured by, uh, you know, gaining things in this world. Uh, our entire focus, you know, the best uh, example I find in, in, in the book of Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah, uh, uh, I, I hope you have read the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah talks about building uh, the, the, uh, the wall, the temple again, which was broken down. And Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 17 it says, those who were rebuilding the wall and those who carried burdens carried with one hand doing the work and the other keeping hold of a weapon. You know, uh, uh, I tried to pictureize this. These people were building the wall, okay? So in one hand, they had the sword uh, or a weapon and in the other hand, they were uh, building the, uh, the temple. That means with one hand, they were working and they were uh, doing their, uh, uh, you know, work. But in the other hand, there was this weapon. That means Jesus is telling, you know, we don't have to use a physical weapon, but to be on spiritual guard. That means that we must be always praying uh, to the Lord while we are at work. While that, that doesn't mean that all the time we hold the Bible and pray, but our focus should be that I need to honor and uh, you know, uh, 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 make sure that I live according to God's principles. And uh, uh, what is the weapon uh, in for us as Christians? Anyone knows what is the only weapon that uh, the Bible has given us, uh, Jesus has given us? No one? Uh, uh, yes, little Kevin? Word of God. Yes, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So it is very important for us to, uh, to know the word of God and uh, use it in, during our difficult situations, uh, even in our uh, happy situations at all times, so that we will not be taken by surprise. Now, immediately after, uh, after uh, uh, Jesus talks about the end times uh, in the book of Matthew, he talks about, uh, uh, you know, two parables. The first parable is about uh, the wise and the foolish virgins. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Uh, then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil in flasks with their lamps. Now, while the groom was delaying, they all became drowsy and began to sleep. Now, watch this. This is the same what Jesus said. You know, do not be drunk by the, uh, the world and weighed down. These people got drowsy and began to sleep. sleep. But at midnight, there was finally a shout. Uh, Jesus said, you do not know. It'll lest it comes upon you like a trap. And this is exactly what happened to these people. Uh, suddenly, uh, there was a shout, Behold, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lambs. But the foolish virgins said to the prudent ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lambs are going out. However, 
excuse me, the prudent ones answered, no, there most certainly would not be enough for us and you to go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the groom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut. Yet later, the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then because you do not know the day nor the hour. So now this is talking about 10 virgins. Now we know virgins means believers. They all went to church. They heard the same message. They attended all the Bible meetings. They, uh, they were serious. Uh, but what was missing? The hidden oil, which was there uh, with the five of wise virgins. Now, this is very, uh, you know, uh, very interesting. Jesus says five were foolish and five were wise. So what is the percentage? 50% of people who will be saying that they are Christians, they are believers, they are going to be sleepy. They are going to be uh, drunk by the world that uh, the things that uh, the world has to offer. They are going to be weighed down with dissipation. That means enjoying themselves, you know, one foot in the world and one foot in the church, uh, not full hearted, not fully committed. You know, Jesus was very clear. Uh, he only wanted uh, disciples who were whole hearted. Uh, you, uh, you know, if you read, I don't have time to show you. Whenever he saw the crowd, immediately he started speaking very, very tough. He said, you cannot be my disciples unless you take up your cross, unless you hate your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, even your own life. So uh, we need to be on our guard. We need to be on the alert. And uh, as young people, I know you face tremendous temptations in this world. Uh, and especially for young men, you know, uh, this world is... Uh, becoming more and more like the days of uh, days of Noah, where sexual immorality was rampant, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, and you have to fight this. You know, you you really have to fight this. And uh, this hidden life that these uh, these uh, five wise virgins had was uh, was holiness in their private life when no one's watching. What are you watching on the computer or what, what sites are you going to? Uh, you know, uh, you need to be very careful because the devil uh, is really, you know, uh, uh, has, uh, has captured a lot of young, uh, young men uh, using, uh, using this uh, sexual temptation, you know, uh, uh, and uh, you really need to fight this. And... Uh, uh, it's, it's not going to happen uh, if you just wish, but if you really fight and take a stand, the Lord is going to help you. Never get discouraged. It doesn't matter if you fall many times. Uh, never stay in discouragement. Okay, Never, never allow discouragement. Always immediately repent and get back and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Lord, I don't want to sin. Uh, you know, I, uh, I need the power of your Holy Spirit. And it doesn't matter if you fall many times. Uh, very soon you'll realize that you have overcome it, you know, and it's a wonderful thing before you get married, if you have victory over this area in your life. And for uh, for uh, sisters, I want to encourage you uh, uh, that don't dress immoderately, modestly, uh, you know, don't tempt uh, uh, the young, young uh, men or uh, young boys, uh, dress modestly and, you know, live a holy life, live a godly life. And uh, uh, you will have a great reward. So you are these people in their secret life, they took, the, took up the cross. It, uh, so in your secret life, what you do in your home, how you talk to your parents, how uh, are you uh, disrespectful to your uh, parents? Uh, do you think that now that you start, started earning, you can call the shots uh, and you can uh, be disobedient? As long as you stay with your parents, you need to respect them. You need to obey them because the Bible is very clear. If you uh, dishonor or uh, you know speak rudely, uh, uh, it it'll not go well with you, and you will not live long on this earth. Uh, that is the only promise. That is the only commandment in the Old Testament which 
came with a promise and which is emphasized in the new covenant so uh, i know i was also a young uh, person like you and when we are especially grown up and we think we know better than our parents uh, it, it is very easy to get uh, irritated with them or you may fall i mean you may uh, slip up but as soon as the holy spirit convicts you please apologize please humble yourself and uh, uh, this will protect you and this will help you to keep that oil uh, with you because you know uh, uh, when jesus comes you cannot at the last minute go collecting oil uh, it, it it has to uh, uh, happen on a daily basis and that is why jesus said that you need to take up your cross daily okay uh, so this is very important and the other uh, parable uh, i don't know how much time i have brother i, I didn't see when i started another 5 minutes uh, okay uh, go ahead brother yeah so uh, in the next parable you see about uh, when the son of man uh, matthew chapter 25 31 to 46 i'm not going to read the full passage for time uh, here it talks about you know verse 34 then the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came to me then the righteous will answer him lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink and when did you we see you as a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you and when did you we see you sick or in prison and come to you and the king will answer to them truly i say to you to the extent that you did it for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine you did it for me and the opposite you know uh, uh, he talks about depart from me you are cursed people into eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels for i was hungry and they they did the opposite so what is this talking about this is talking about our righteous acts that means uh, we are supposed to uh, live a life of sacrifice of giving you know and uh, uh, jesus said you know uh, uh, which paul quotes it is more blessed to give than to receive you know as children of adam we come with a clenched fist we come with this give me give me give me give me mentality and when we come to church also we uh, have the same mentality okay we uh, we say the right words have this right doctrine but when we come to church give me job give me money give me husband give me wife give me home give me this give me that give me it's all about me uh whereas uh, when we come to the lord he, he has already given us so much uh, and uh, do you think he uh, you know in, in the book of romans i think is written if he did not spare his one and only son how much more he will give you all things uh, we have a father in heaven we don't have a, a corporate boss that you do this you perform this then i will pay you no we have a father we must always remember that we have a father in heaven who loves us and who will not withhold anything good from his children if you are honest if you are sincere you may be failing a hundred times but as long as you are honest and you are sincere god is never going to leave you never going to forsake you will make sure that you will always have a job you may not be a millionaire but you will have enough to feed yourself and when you get married uh, your family Uh, you know david says that i have been young and i now i'm old but i've never seen a righteous man begging for food or even his children begging for food so uh, you know in today's time with all this ai chat gpt and you know careers this that robotics uh, the world is under a lot of stress and pressure but you need to reject that you always need to tell yourself that god is my father doesn't mean that you will be lazy and do nothing you will do your best but you will not allow these things to weigh you down and capture uh, um, your mind so that you don't have time to serve the lord and here he says that 
whatsoever you did to the least of these my brothers and sisters you did it for me and this is how uh, this is talking about how we can uh, put others first and you know the wonderful thing about these people is uh, that they don't remember what good they did you know this is something that we need to practice that whatever good we do we try and you know forget it because by nature we have this habit of recording carefully every single good thing that we have done and uh, forgetting all the good that we have received we have to reverse it and uh, it doesn't happen uh, immediately it needs time so you we all need to grow in this whatever you've heard don't think uh, you know uh, take it as a burden or any uh, kind of uh, that oh uh, you know i'm 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 so far over this but uh, be zealous and the lord will definitely help you because here uh, it, it says in ephesians you know uh, uh, ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this not of yourselves it is the gift of god not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them so we are not saved because we are good we are saved only because of jesus and his sacrifice we need to be absolutely clear about it and because we are saved we do good works when we come to church we come with the attitude how can i bless others not give me give me how can others bless me but what i can do to help my brother or sister and before that at home you know how you can be a help at home how you can uh, be a blessing to your parents to your siblings and uh, that's how you collect the oil which uh, which will make sure that when the lord comes you will not be like those foolish virgins that you will be ready for his return and you will have absolutely no regret i don't want to have any regret in eternity uh, so may god help all of you all of us that uh, we'll all be ready and you know on the day of judgment we'll not have anything to fear uh, may god bless you all